Once upon a time, in a quaint fishing village nestled by a turquoise bay, lived a fisherman named Marco. Unlike his boisterous colleagues who returned with overflowing nets, Marco's luck seemed perpetually stuck in low tide. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months, with barely enough fish to feed his wife, Sophia, and their three rambunctious children. Fish stew, their usual staple, became a distant memory, replaced by a disheartening diet of stale bread and watery vegetables. One particularly bleak morning, Marco set sail with a heavy heart. The sun, usually a cheerful companion, seemed to mock him with its relentless glare. As he cast his net, a silent prayer escaped his lips, a plea for a bountiful catch. The first tug on the line sent a jolt of excitement through him, but it quickly morphed into disappointment as he pulled in a tangled mess. A dead horse, its bloated carcass a ghastly reminder of his misfortune. Despair threatened to engulf him, but with a deep breath, he cast his net again. This time, the resistance felt different, lighter, but stubbornly stuck. With a grunt and a heave, he pulled in what appeared to be a sack. Hope flickered in his chest. Maybe a lost net full of fish. Yet, as he untied the knot, his heart sank. The sack contained nothing but chipped and dusty mugs, remnants of a long-forgotten picnic. Frustration bubbled within him. What am I supposed to do with these? He muttered, flinging the sack back into the sea. The rhythm of the waves lapping against his boat seemed to echo his despair. Just as he was about to give up, a powerful tug nearly ripped the line from his hands. He braced himself and hauled with all his might. This time, something heavy and metallic emerged from the churning water. It was a jar, encrusted with a layer of what looked like moss. Curiosity peaked. He wiped it clean, revealing a gleaming surface of pure gold. Etched on the top were strange symbols, alien to his eyes. Yet, a sense of wonder coursed through him. Perhaps this jar was the answer to his prayers, a hidden treasure that could change his fortunes. Eagerness to see its contents overwhelmed him. He carefully unsealed the jar, and a plume of white smoke erupted, swirling and coalescing into a colossal figure that towered over him. Fear turned Marco's blood to ice. The giant, with a booming voice that shook the boat, declared, Foolish fisherman, for releasing me, you shall pay the ultimate price. Marco stammered, who are you? Why would you harm me? The giant boomed again. I am Groth, a prisoner trapped for centuries within this jar. Now, prepare for your demise. Marco's mind raced. How could he reason with this colossal being? Wait, he cried, stalling for time. But how can I die? Do you wish to crush me in your hand, or perhaps drown me in the sea? The giant paused, a flicker of confusion crossing his monstrous features. Death is death, he grumbled. But let me tell my tale. Once I, Groth, walked these lands as a giant amongst giants. Foolishly, I took the king's youngest daughter for a walk by the sea a transgression the old fool never forgave. He trapped me in this accursed jar, sealed with his magic and his name. He cursed me to drown in my beloved ocean. But, Groth continued, his voice laced with bitterness, 
He also believed someone would release me, someone worthy to become a great king or queen. But centuries passed. No one came. Groth's voice grew thunderous with rage. Years turned into decades, decades into centuries. Hope dwindled, replaced by fury. I decided whoever released me would meet a swift end. Marco, realizing an opportunity, interjected. Before you send me to a watery grave, answer this one question. Speak quickly, mortal. Groth roared, impatient. Were you truly trapped within this tiny jar? Marco pointed at the golden vessel in his hand. You seem too large, wouldn't you agree? Groth's booming laughter filled the air. Of course, you simpleton. The jar imprisoned my essence, not my physical form. But wait here. Groth's form shimmered, shrinking down in size until he was no bigger than Marco himself. With a gasp, Groth found himself back within the jar. See, Groth's muffled voice echoed from within. You freed me. Now put the lid back or face my wrath. A slow smile crept across Marco's face. Oh, Groth, you simple giant. He chuckled softly. The despair that had weighed him down for so long lifted. Perhaps Groth wasn't.